This episode of the Touch of Gaming podcast is brought to you by PNP Games, your online source for everything video games. Visit their website at pnpgames.com or at one of their two retail locations in Winnipeg, Manitoba. All right, everybody, and welcome to the Touch of Gaming podcast. This is episode number 143. We're recording this on Thursday, August 8th, 2013. As always, I'm your host, Lloyd Hannison, and this is a bit of a special episode. Um, joining me this week, Jared Schultz. Jared, how's it going? It's going good. Is it special because I'm here? Yeah, it's special. It's always special when you're here. Good. Oh, wait, good. you're here every week, so maybe it's not so oh, yeah. special. <laughs> happens uh no no that's not why it's special jared don't be silly the reason why it's special is we have uh we have a special guest this week we have kurt hussein right i got that right you got it right i was i was double i was like thinking about it in my he- head really hard before saying it but i'm sure that was what it was and uh he's a programmer over at mighty rabbit studios um we reviewed their game breach and clear last week and uh, we have someone from the company here to chat a little bit about game development about the game and about other stuff so kurt uh welcome to the show glad to be here awesome so um you're a programmer so you do the you do the code stuff the, the fun yep. tinkering code stuff. So I don't know, before we get into um, kind of the interview about uh, the games, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, about yourself? All right. So um, I recently in the past two years graduated from NC State with a master's degree in computer science. Um, during my time at NC State, I took a three game projects course there and um, worked in a lot of video games related things. Actually, with the, the owner of Mighty Rabbit Studios uh, was one of my classmates in a video game project course I took there. We made a game called Terraform with the Unreal Engine. It was a chemistry-based puzzle shooter set in a world uh, in a future 1970s where Earth is dying. So it's an alternate history. So it's like we have a ridiculous backstory that you don't even get to completely see in the game that Josh came up with for that one. It was kind of fun. Right. Um, so... Since that, I, I joined up with Mighty Rep Studios once Josh got, got the funding for it and got it started, and I had graduated. So I didn't I wasn't there at the inception of the company, but I was there after like the first year, and I worked on Saturday Morning RPG, and I've worked on Breach and Clear, which uh, I was lead programmer on Breach and Clear. Cool, awesome. So you've been you've been doing this for a little bit. Um, I, I guess uh, Jared, uh, why don't we start talking about um, Saturday Morning RPG? Because I know you've played that one a little bit as well. Um, how was that development like, Kurt? Um, I, I guess I remember it way back in the day. I remember hearing about the Kickstarter and checking it out and falling in love with the um, with the idea because I'm I'm a kid of the '80s and I loved all that crappy G.I. Joe cartoon stuff. Um, and it, and it just came out so much in, in, in the videos that you guys put up They needed the Kickstarter. You wanted to raise, I think it was like six grand or something. And you ended up raising 12 or something like that. Was it? Yeah, it's, it's about, I think it was a little over 10, 10,000 that we ended up raising. And the goal was 6,000. Right. Um, so it, it was really cool to, to see just one day, like, uh, we got a donation for like 3000. That was like, Whoa. Oh, wow. Um, uh, so that, that was cool. Um, and we're, the the Kickstarter, what I was I was happy to see its success and it, it helped keep keep our company going. Like we probably if we didn't do that, we probably wouldn't still be a company. Um, so it's I'm very thankful for it. We're still uh, committed to what we promised in the Kickstarter back then mm-hmm. because like we we, we we like have promises about uh, we're gonna get out X number of episodes. We're not quite there yet, but right. we're we're working on that right now. Very slowly because we're having to focus on breach and clear because that's what's what's keeping us going right now. Right. So you have a couple couple pipelines happening right now. Um, in yeah. Development. So I know a Saturday morning RPG. It, it's on iOS. Um, it's also on Android and the Ouya. I saw it recently when I was like browsing through my Ouya. I saw it on the the screen there. I'm like, oh yeah, cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah. It's how- not actually on Android yet, but that's, oh, okay. that, that we're actually very close to getting that that ready to submit oh cool I, I thought it was actually on but you put it on the ouya first yeah the, um, for android because okay. the has one device yeah we, we just need to test it on that one with the actual android we have so many other things we have to, to test it on for sure 
Well, that's cool. So what was the development of uh, Saturday Morning RPG like? I mean, it's it's kind of like a well, obviously, it's a it's an old school 8 bit RPG that doesn't look anything like an old school 8 bit RPG. Um, so what was that? Um, what was that process like, like from from inception? I know you didn't you didn't start right when the game started, but you were there yeah. for kind of the, the crunch and uh, and then the Kickstarter and stuff like that. So I don't know. Maybe could you tell us a little bit about what what that was like? Yeah, it was, it was actually a lot of fun. I, I, I really enjoyed working on, on Saturday Morning RPG a lot uh, because basically, you know, we get to be ridiculous with it. We don't have to <laughs> adhere to any sort of a serious theme. If we have a reference we want to make, we, we just put it in there. Um, and uh, it, it just we, and if you want to put in a bad pun or some ridiculous, uh, <laughs> you know, dialogue, we, we can actually do that in there and – uh, I, I I just love throwing ideas around for it, like for for new kinds of attacks, or or how how something how an attack should actually work in the game, and having to think up what kind of kill animation should this play when this this attack finishes and stuff. So that that's a lot of fun. Actually, um, recently we're, uh, we're we're still working on the next episode, and one of the attacks I wanted to put in there. I, I'm a big fan of Mega Man, so we we have a, a Mega Man themed attack in the next one. Okay. And so. I, I I just like throwing in the things that I love in there, and hopefully the passion of the things that we're passionate about comes through to the player. And uh, some references, some people won't get, but other people will. So like, there's something for everybody if they've at all, you know, ha- ever had nostalgia for the '80s. Right. Yeah. And it totally it's 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 a love letter to the 80s and Saturday morning cartoons when I was growing up. I mean, your your power power ups are like CDs and joysticks and and like uh, what is that? That fruit striped gum or whatever. <laughs> and it's like oh, all yeah, those fruit striped gum is one of my favorite. And I'm Canadian. So I only that was like a super special thing when we'd go down to the States and I'd buy like three packs of fruit striped gum and and it would be like dried and terrible by the time I finally got to through finishing it all. <laughs> but I mean, I have so much memories of that as a kid. Um, so everything about this game just like hit, hit all those like retro nostalgia centers in my brain. Um, so I really love it. So um, so you're still actively developing. You have um, h- how many chapters are you working on? You wanted to come out with three, I believe. Was that was that the case? I think uh, so far right. it launched with two. Right. Uh, we, we put out a third one, which is our Transformers one. And. As a, we put out a fourth one, which is a Christmas episode. Okay. Um, we're planning on doing two more. An actual in, in in the design doc we have for the game. Originally, before it launched, we wanted to get twenty done, but right. that was a bit 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 over the top of way too much. Especially, we we need a lot more income to to be able to fund that much development. For sure, for sure. So but, yeah, so so about two more episodes. So it's like six total. Cool. So how many people are working at, at the, the studio? I guess we never really had you explain a little bit about what Mighty Rabbits is. So maybe we can jump into that first. I kind of I jumped ahead because I'm so excited about talking to someone that worked on Saturday Morning RPG. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, the, 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 the studio right now, as it stands, uh, we're, we're about seven people, uh, uh, three, three programmers, including Josh and the uh, four artists. Uh, so that's the main, the main team that was working on Breach and Clear, and a lot of those people just signed on uh, last year when we started working on this project. Before that, there was a time when we were only like four people. Um, so there's been a lot of changes in the dynamics of the company, uh, and it's it's been in a pretty steady state for the last year, though. So cool. And, and do you guys like actually have an office? Or are you like one of those indie studios that are in a garage somewhere? <laughs> When we started working on Breach and Clear, we we moved from a basement to to an <laughs> office in Holly Springs. So well, that was a, a big step up. We have an we even have an arcade machine in there now, so it's it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Nothing wrong with basements. I call my basement my studio, uh, even though it's not a recording studio, but it's close enough for uh, for, for what for what I need. So that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. And then um, porting it over to the Ouya, I know that. This isn't really Ouya, but um, it's still relevant. Um, how easy was that to do? I mean, um, it wasn't super hard. It took a while to get the controller stuff working because, like, we 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 backed them on Kickstarter, so we get the dev kit. We got that in like January, and uh, started doing work on having to convert the way that the we were taking input. We'd already been experimenting with a little bit of controller input because we were when working on the Android build, we were doing some stuff with the Xperia Play. So, uh, but, but mm-hmm. the way that, that the input for you, was working at the time, 
it, it was the way it was sending to Vince was kind of weird. We had to to redo a lot of the the input. Um, I think they've they've changed stuff recently because they've been updating the the uh, uh, SDK or whatever. Um, so it's 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 been been interesting to work on, but it wasn't wasn't super hard once I got past that one hurdle. Like it it, it after like a few days of of tinkering with it, it was working. Is that because you do you guys use a Unity or do you use an engine to program your stuff? Yeah, we we use uh, Unity, so it's it anything we we make it's easy to port from uh, iOS or or Android. There's a with 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 yeah, there was the the ODK we had to integrate with it, but uh, they they had a lot of stuff for for that. Very cool. All right. Well, um, so you, you, you've you've worked obviously on a, on a big game, a Saturday morning RPG that had a lot of parts. When did the idea for uh, Breach and Clear and kind of what was your um, what was kind of like the seed idea that kind of bloomed into what Breach and Clear is now? Like, was this something that that you guys developed as a group, or was this sort of like a project that was always in kind of like the back pocket uh, of the people that founded the uh, the studio? Actually, it's it's not really a game anyone at Mighty Rap Zoo is had ever had in mind or was was wanting to make. Uh, basically, we were we were looking for contract work to to keep our company going, and and Gun Media was looking for someone to make their military game, and uh, they they wound up hiring us to do the job. And originally, there wasn't much of a a clear idea of what the game would be, just that it would have a lot of these military concepts in it, um, and there was a lot of iterations that went through along the way. Originally, it was supposed to be completely squad-based movement. It was it was turn-based and on a grid, but the the turns where you have a sequence of actions that you take while the enemies don't move at all, and then the enemies take their turn, sort of like a more traditional turn-based right. game. Uh, and but then down the line, uh, we we completely changed courses, and it became the simultaneous t- simultaneous turn game that it is today, which would it's. Uh, Basically, how it happened was we we were realizing we were reaching too far. There was way too much going on, so we decided let's just simplify it, get down to the core thing that's fun. Already had in this this mechanic for uh, drawing their paths, um, and uh, basically it was you you choose the door, and then you would say uh, breach, and then then once you hit that button, uh, for all four of your guys that that will already be stacked on the door, you would draw lines for what paths it would take in the room. Basically, what it is now, except it only happened when you selected breach on a door. Um, and so like when we were simplifying, trying to make it, what's the core fun thing? We decided it was that, that, that drawing the pass for the guys thing uh, and breaching rooms. So we, we, it became a game where it was just a single room and you, you draw a pass, you breach and in one turn, you see what happens. That's it. And when we did that, we realized, Hey, it's only you one turn. We can have the enemies move at the same time. So that that that's when it became simultaneous turns, and then we decided, hey, it doesn't have to just be one room, and it doesn't have to just be one turn, and boom, it it started to become really fun. We added in the the cover system, uh, and we've just been building on it from there and there. So it wasn't really the game that it is today uh, until just a few months ago. It's interesting to see that evolution over time. Um, you know, I've it's been one that I've been following on any major news sites that you've given it, uh, you know, access to it, and I've I've always been really fascinated by the idea because it, those simultaneous turns is is really kind of something that I haven't really seen before. So, um, yeah, kudos to you guys for that. Um, and then there's a ton of customization options in it. Um, are are those part of of the contract with Gun, or is that you know your guys's efforts, or, or how did that all come about? Uh, the the customization thing, uh, largely a lot of that is wanting to include all of the the content that the Gun wanted in the game, and part of it is that um, it adds a lot of depth to the game to be able to customize your stuff. And 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 I, I heard mentioned earlier that uh, a lot of it doesn't really feel feel meaningful. Um, which 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 is kind of an intentional in, in some regard that we wanted the the core focus of the game to be you win because of your tactics it's not because of the gear you got um, at the same time um, there are people who really enjoy customizing their stuff and they like to tinker with with it and uh, I've been reading on different forums and stuff a lot of people 
talking about the different guns they're using. Some people have actually found some combinations that are that they, they say are really effective and they notice the difference. So it's one of those things you have to play around with to really get the feel for. We're, we're still, it's still something we're, we're working on tweaking in the future. So we're just going to be probably some rebalancing and, and reworking of the way we're displaying stats. So it's more clear what each thing's doing. Uh, but for now, it's, it's in the state that it's in. Cool. So I, I think um, I'm, I'm thinking back to some of the early articles that I read about the game that got me super excited. Um, was this game originally um, designed to be free to play or ha- had you always wanted to charge a premium price for it? Um, personally, it, it always felt like a, a premium game to me, but we were we were it's supposed to be making a, a free to play game. Sure. Uh, so like. It, it just came to the point eventually that we realized that. With 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 the kind of game that we're making, free to play didn't fit. Sure, it, it 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 probably would you know be offering too much content for free that that you know and the 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 model that we were doing for free to play wasn't completely figured out how it would work for this kind of a game. So right. it was best to just drop it and. I still feel like two dollars is a great price for the game. So oh, no, it's 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 a. I mean that's. The, the thing that happened, like when, when the app store first opened, you had you had Sega with their ten dollar monkey ball that didn't work. You had people with the like three dollar prism or trism. You had ninety nine cent apps and then and then ninety nine cent apps took over for years. And it's actually really nice to see uh, games not launch at ninety nine cents, not be like throwaway purchases for people because um, it, yeah. it gives a little bit more investment for the developer to further development. And it and. I don't know. It, it just feels better to buy a game for two or three dollars. Like I, I picked up. Um, oh, what what the heck is the name of that game? It's like Nightmare Tower. Um, the other day, and it's like three bucks, and it's like it's three dollars. Who cares? Um, I'd rather pay three dollars for it and have the developer work on it than spend ninety nine cents. So, no, like it's cheaper than cheaper than getting getting McDonald's. So. Oh yeah, it's like a latte is five bucks, and I or I'll I'll go buy two um, iced tea lemonades from Starbucks, and I spend like nine dollars. And then I realized that I bought sugar water for nine dollars, and wow, yeah. and then people have problems buying ninety nine cent apps. So I, the price, the pricing structure in the app store has always been kind of bizarre. Um, but to me, like when I was looking at the game and and the um, the game almost looked like it was set up to be free to play, with just in the the layout of the menu and the, and the stuff and the customization. Um, but then there's no free to play parts into it, which was actually kind of um, kind of nice because I'm kind of growing tired of, of free to play games that are basically just um, hit hit the uh, like pull pull the handle down on on the slot machine and uh, put more put, put more money in every single time. So that was really kind of nice. Um, but but like you said, the whole customization thing early on, it seemed like there was really no point to it. But I, I know Jared has played a lot more and he's gotten a lot deeper in the game than I have. And he he said he's starting to feel kind of what that is there. And and I guess it. To me, it's it, it makes sense now. Uh, obviously, it's you're you're starting the game. You're not going to buy a gun at the start of the game. That's going to allow you to basically destroy the rest of the game. So that makes sense. Um, so I guess that's kind of what we were getting at uh, on the last episode when we were saying about that. It just seemed it seemed really bizarre, um, especially with the gold uh, the gold gun that was uh, the bonus for, uh, for for downloading the first week or month or whatever whatever that bonus is for yeah. that you then had to buy after. And I'm just like. That's really weird, but it. Yeah, the whole it, reason for the having to buy after thing is because, um, basically, we wanted to unlock it so you can buy as many as you wanted. So, like, sure. if it just gave you one, you could only equip it to one guy. Mm-hmm. By having it as a marketplace option, you can, if you want to equip all your guys, that you can buy four of them. If you want to get all four squads, you can get buy sixteen of them eventually. Sure. But uh, if you know, if if you started out with all of them, uh, I, I guess we probably could have put. 16 in your inventory that would have probably but you know people already complain about these cluttered inventories totally so, totally no that would have uh, been that would have been way worse i people would have, yeah. would have flew off the handle i'm sure <laughs> so uh the interesting thing is now it's launched um you're obviously getting a lot of feedback on it how does that influence what you guys do next or do you already have a plan and then you're going with that or are you taking more community feedback how does that work well, there are there are a lot of things we already had in mind, but at the same time, we we want to definitely want to address the the things that that are, that are bothering people the most. Like for instance, we just put out the update, and uh, a lot of people yeah, were got having trouble. Bef- What's that? Oh, I said I got that with the vests and the kill shot. <laughs> yeah, those were actually uh, features we we had been working on prior to release, but 
that we was just but right before launch some weird issues were coming up with them and uh we didn't have time to resolve them so we, we had to say okay uh let, let's hold back on on that until we can get it right um and so after the game launched i noticed people were were, were you know complaining about like a, a lack of action and well the vest thing was obviously gonna 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 be coming in because we, we put a coming soon banner on there uh to let people know that this feature is supposed to be here it's coming soon uh, so we definitely want to want to get rid of the coming soon stuff as as soon as possible. Uh, the the action cams we actually have had a screenshot in the app store of that, and that's weird that it wasn't in the game at launch. Um, so definitely want to get out of the way. The other big thing we we added in is the instant replay, um, which was something we we were we were playing with before and never really uh, finished in development because there were a lot of things that had to be reset properly, and there there, there was some weirdness with that. But I I resolved that recently and we were able to submit it in the update. And that that helps solve a lot of problems people are having with they're not able to see everything that's going on so they miss it. That's that that's a huge thing in this kind of a game because you can't look at everything on the map, especially on the bigger maps. Uh, and it's it's a lot of fun to just be able to change your angle and see see things. So that was very important. Other things I'm seeing are like feedback on the way that you use the menu. Uh, for instance, like with consumables, uh, people ha- every time they finish a mission they have to back out to the menu buy some more consumables, equip them with their guys, and that's a really tedious process. So uh, we, we decided that we're going to make the consumables only be paid for when you actually use them on a mission. So like you you go to your guy, you equip it to him. When you're equipping it to him, it says, hey, this grenade costs you X amount of silver every time you use it. And so you use it on the mission. You see you get at the after action report, it cost me this much. That gets removed from the money you would have gained. Uh, rather than having to go back to the menu, you still have that grenade as an option every every mission you continue into. Hmm. So just kind of simplifying things down. So <laughs> so you're saying that basically it's it's a, a combination of what you guys had already planned and and then trying to get feedback from the community. Yeah, we want we want to address whatever can ever is bothering people the most, or whatever people want to see the most. And there's also that level of what's feasible and a quicker turnaround time in relation to that. So, you know, before we put out an update, um, we're, we're, working, we're working on the game while we're waiting for the update to get approved. So we won't, we won't get feedback on that update yet anyway, so we have to start working on something else. Right. And so that, that's, that's a factor as well as, you know, once we start seeing people responding to things, what are the things we can address quickly? So... Um so your your studio obviously is Mighty Rabbit Studios, but the game was published under Gun Media Holdings. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously that's another company. I, what kind of say do they have into the direction of the game? Are, are they are, are they there with like micromanaging, check marking? Yep, that's okay. Or are you guys kind of given free reign to kind of do what you feel is best for the franchise for the for the game that you're working on? Uh, they get final say, but we we do a lot of uh, back and forth discussing what we think should be done. Perfect. So uh, that that's that's basically how it goes. Like we'll we'll recommend something, they may not like it, or uh, or they'll recommend something we won't like it, and we'll go back and forth until uh, we, we reach some resolution. And decide, okay, uh, I see where you're coming from on this, um, so we're going to do it this way, and ultimately it comes down to. to if they, if they give it a yes or they give it a no when we want to do something. Sure. Well, that, that sounds good because I, I know some other um, kind of freelancers and I've heard some ma- major horror stories about uh, uh, writing apps for, for other companies and, and, and just the, the crazy micromanaging that goes on. But for a game like this, you almost need to be a little more agile because you're, you're adding in different guns. You're, you're changing balancing. You're adding in features. Um, if you had to go through multiple layers of, of fine tooth, fine tooth combing over every change that you wanted to do, it might have um, you might not have ever ever had an update out which you've already had out so that's that's good to say yeah cool so um I'd, so one one question i want to ask uh is about games like breach and clear like are, are you are you a fan of these types of games like did you play the xcoms were you into um like xcom like long time ago the newer ones um any of these types of like kind of turn-based strategy games anything on like nintendo like uh advance wars like these types of games is, is this kind of what you like to play uh i, I actually am a, I, I i liked advance wars a lot i i had 
had a, a couple of those on the the Game Boy Advance, and I and I got the two on the the DS. Right. So like I enjoy those games a lot. So like they, in in the background of my mind is making a turn based game. Those were a big influence for me. Sure. Um, I, generally I don't play these kind of games. Usually I I, I did get into <laughs> to XCOM when I was doing development because like they said I should check it out and I th- I thought it was a really the the new one is a really fun game. I hadn't played the old one. Um. More recently, I got into Fire Emblem, which I thought was really cool. That was a great game. Uh, yeah, and uh, as far as the games that, that I that I love, I I love Mega Man uh, and Mario. Like those those are those are like my top ones. So you're a Nintendo fan, so you, you did, I am you a did, Nintendo. You guy, didn't yeah. mind tuning into Nintendo Pulse that we were just doing prior to doing this one. It wasn't uh, it wasn't too bad to listen to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, um, I know I know you're limited for time, but uh, uh, Jared, do you have anything else to uh, ask before we uh, call this one um, for then for the evening? Well, I think we have to ask about anything coming up, or what? What's you know? What can you tell us about what's going on next? Uh, as far as breaching clear goes, I'm not completely sure how much I can reel, but we're <laughs> planning on having new special forces guys, more maps. Uh, planning on getting in that that bomb defusal mode. Um, Maybe getting in uh, some some more social features, so like you could uh, maybe record videos of your your replays. Nice. Uh, something we're looking into. That's uh, what I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. That's awesome. All right, Jared. Um, I, I unless you have anything else to add, I, I think uh, we should say uh, thanks a lot to uh, Kurt Hussein for coming on and um, and and doing this interview. Um, you guys should uh, check out Breach and Clear on the App Store um, or listen to our review last week. Um, check out what we have to say and um, with all the patches that are coming out I, I think we're going to revisit the, this one every once in a while it'll be one of those uh, one of the games that we like to have uh, on the show every once in a while um, because it, it does seem like we said in the review there's there's all this crazy potential that we can see and uh, we just can't wait to play that game so um, yeah Kurt thanks thanks a lot for coming on the show man yeah you're very welcome all right. Well, um, that's going to about do it for this episode. Uh, a special short, um, special edition of the Touch of Gaming podcast. Uh, let us know what you think. Head on over to vgpodcast.com and, uh, and check it out. Comment on the post or head on over to the forums uh, to post about uh, Breach and Clear or um, all the stuff to do with this episode. Uh, you can email us directly at vgpodcasts at gmail.com or you can call our voicemail line, which is area code 505 Podcast. So again, Kurt, thanks a lot for joining us. And yeah, thanks for having me. we'll talk to you guys um, in a week's time. Take it easy. Thanks.